I'm Ann Tenenbaum and I'm chairman of the board here at the Film Society of Lincoln Center and I want to thank everybody for being here today and taking part in this celebration in honor of the grand opening of the Eleanor Bunin Monroe Film Center. Today you're witnessing the end of a very long journey and the beginning of a new era in the Film Society's history. <clears throat> Ten years ago the building behind me was just an idea but today it is a reality, and we're going to show you the sign. Just <laughs> as the landscape of movie going and film exhibition continues to evolve. The Eleanor Bunin Monroe Film Center represents the Film Society's continued commitment to the art of film. It is with great pride that we expand our presence at Lincoln Center, a campus where we have been honored to call our home for over 30 years. I want to take this moment to recognize some of the many, many individuals whose vision, generosity, and efforts have made today possible. Joanne Koch, who is a former director of the Film Society and also spearheaded our building effort. Claudia Bonn, also a former director of the Film Society and, uh, and she was the director when we started, when we voted this project and started it. So thank you, Claudia and Joanne. Richard Pena, our amazing programmer who's been with us for many years and whose programming has made it possible for us to expand. Rose Quo, our wonderful new director, who's gotten us to this point. The entire board of Lincoln of, of the Film Society who have given blood, sweat, tears, and money to make this day happen. And of course, to my I don't want to say partner, it will be misinterpreted, but my partner at, at the Film Society, Dan Stern, who has done an unbelievable job in making this film center a reality. Thank you, Dan. It's my great pleasure now and my honor to introduce you to an individual who has represented the great state of New York and Washington, both as a member of the House of Representatives and currently as our senator. Please join me in welcoming Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. It is such a privilege to be here for the opening of the Eleanor Bunin Monroe Film Center. Congratulations, Eleanor. You must be so excited to realize this beautiful vision. As all of you know, New York City is the home to a thriving film community and has served as an indelible background and backdrop to countless movie sets. Film is part of the very fabric of our city. So it is fitting that we now have this world-class theater in the heart of Lincoln Center. Each year, a quarter of a million people from over 450 countries come through Lincoln Center's doors. And for nearly 50 years, the Film Society of Lincoln Center has brought the best... <laughs> we have lights! We now have a fully lit sign. A good, a good, a good sign of things to come. This state-of-the-art media center will not only serve as a major cultural destination for film goers all across the world, but it will inspire the boundless imaginations of countless visitors, young and old alike. The center's latest technology and creative space will entertain, inform, and bring together audiences. Lectures, panels, and educational programs offered here will educate and engage film enthusiasts, students, teachers, and visitors alike. Making art accessible to all New Yorkers across multiple platforms is an important part of our great city's vision and cultural future. I am so excited to see this vision expand and grow with this opening of this spectacular landmark. Congratulations. President of Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts, Reynold Levy. This is a very special occasion, not only in the life of the Film Society, but of Lincoln Center as a whole. It represents the completion of another major step in the massive $1.2 billion 
physical transformation of Lincoln Center. When this huge undertaking began, my colleagues and I hoped that it would result in a Lincoln Center that was more inviting, more welcoming, more open, younger, more vibrant, and nowhere more so than on 65th Street, which we hope to convert into a brand new street for the arts. Today, in fully realizing the dreams of film society trustees, staff, and donors, public and private, all of these features of redevelopment are present in abundance. Most importantly, the expanded facilities for the film society enables it to better discharge its mission by adding two gorgeous and comfortable screening rooms, a terrific education space, and a pleasant environment in which to hang out over a snack, a meal, a glass of wine, a coffee, or pastries, I have been assured at all hours of day and night. More and different films, an expansion of the society's reach to elementary and secondary school kids, a fuller display of the world's great cinema, and of the explosion of talent flocking to film as a means of artistic expression, as a source of beauty, as a statement of human rights, as a seminal source of ideas, of character, and of values. So with these splendid additional facilities brought to us by David Rockwell, his extended design team, and the construction workers who put their sweat equity and pride into some truly magnificent spaces, much will change for the Film Society now that the Walter Reed Theater no longer stands alone. I am privileged to address you today on behalf of Lincoln Center's Board of Directors and its Chair, Catherine Farley, to congratulate you on such a major accomplishment and to salute you also for what will not change. For since its founding, the Film Society has been aptly characterized as discerning, daring, and eclectic in what it has chosen to exhibit in who it selects to honor, in what talented actors, directors, screenplay writers, video editors, and fashion designers it brings to the public's attention. The Film Society is inextricably associated with quality of the highest order, and it is a member in very good standing of the Collaborative of Resident Organizations, collectively known as Lincoln Center. And now it is my pleasure to introduce a leader who as much as any other has brought us to this day. He may be a very accomplished and astute investor. He may be also a splendid civic citizen and activist, but he is at bottom a film freak. <laughs> and nothing turns Dan Stern on more than the magic that will appear on these new screens. And I know that nothing pleases him more than to join Anne and the rest of the board in moving the Film Society from strength to strength. So please, a warm welcome for Dancer.